I mean that you have to fall in love with the thing that you're going after so much that it is impossible for you not to achieve it. In this episode of the Unstoppable Woman podcast, I thought I would do something in honor of Valentine's Day, which is coming right up. So we're going to take a unique look at how desire, the core wound of being unlovable, and business success all intersect. I hope you love this episode and that it gives you a ton of help to grow your life and your business because you want both. I know you do. Okay, so let's start off with a burning desire. You must have a burning desire. This is something that gets you out of bed in the morning. This is something that you really, truly want. Napoleon Hill in his, you know, amazing classic book, Think and Grow Rich, speaks about it being a requirement. It starts with desire. You must have something that you are willing to move mountains for that gets you out of bed in the morning, that gets you so committed, so willing to do the work that you will not stop, you will not quit, you will persevere despite when there are challenges because guess what? There are going to be challenges. You've got to want it badly enough. It's absolutely required. Desire is causative. It's the thing that's going to call you forward. It's the thing that's going to cause you to move mountains and do whatever it takes to succeed, to achieve your goal. It must be so strong that you will do the hard things, both on the daily, right? There's like the daily grinds. There is like, you got to be willing to grind it out. You got to be willing to, to answer all those emails and do all the, the, sometimes tedious things or sometimes things that you don't like doing in order to get through that phase in order to get to what you want. Now, ultimately I teach people that it doesn't have to be a grind because of your perspective, what you're bringing to your work. But in the beginning, it's going to feel like you're, you're moving a boulder up the hill, getting a business off the ground. It's going to, f- you, you don't have momentum yet and everything does feel challenging. Just acknowledge that. And how quickly can you change your attitude? How quickly can you fall in love with what you're doing? Because if you want the outcome that you want, if the th- Thing that you desire is so strong it's a burning desire you must have it then you must fall in love transmute that desire from the the end result to the journey that is so critical so there's there's the daily challenges that you will face and then there are the big momentous challenges right the big things that come up there's daily you know, commonplace, run in the mill kind of challenges. And then there are big ass challenges that come up when you're running your business. Both exist, both exist. And if you are not in love with what you want to accomplish, you won't pursue that. This is a real problem. Most people won't own it. They won't stake a claim. They won't go for something that they really, truly want. They make it smaller and they diminish their desire. They choose something reasonable to go after and they deny themselves. And in fact, that is like denying God, spirit, source, the universe, infinite intelligence. You were born with a spiritual DNA. This is part of your energy map that you were were given your energy DNA. And if you don't own what you want, because that is the way that spirit calls us forward, that's the way the universe tells us what our next move is. It's through that desire. You have to claim that desire because when you have that, you will do the hard things. You will grow through the hard things. You will become a bigger person able to receive something at a much higher level. But 
desire is what pulls you forward. And the problem is that most people won't claim it. They have too many uh, double binds. They want it, but then there are these other things that they think if, if they say that they want it, it's going to be in conflict with something else in their life. The women in my family don't run businesses. If I run a business, then I am going to be thrown out of the tribe. The women in my family won't, won't like me anymore and they'll reject me. And I value their relationship. And so if I value their relationship, I can't build a business. Instead of solving for the problem there, instead of claiming, you know, I really wanna make this impact in this world through my business. Instead of claiming that, claiming what's there for you, the, the thrill of building something and creating something and what that does for your sense of self, your self-esteem, you say, that's not for me because I have this double bind. Now, you don't say that consciously, but subconsciously, you make yourself small. And that's just one example. If that didn't land for you, think about when you wonder what other people will say about you or the judgment from others. This will give you a clue as to where your double binds are. So you must claim your burning desire. So let's talk about what, what could be a burning desire. Well, certainly sex and love top the list of mind stimulants. That's part of uh, Think and Grow Rich. There are 10 mind stimulants that activate you so that you're going for more. But the third one on the list is a financial goal. So the first one is the desire for sex expression. The second is love. And the third is a burning desire for fame, power, or financial gain or money. Now there are seven others that you can go read about, but I wanna let you know that the top three are sexual expression, love, and financial gain, some sort of business gain, okay? Th that's critical when you're thinking about how you're showing up in your business. And there's a link between these three. I'm going to hazard that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that out there for you to consider. That your sexual expression, your love for yourself and for others, and particularly for a, a muse, if you will, a, a significant other, and your desire for riches, financial gain, are all interrelated. And they activate you, they draw you forward. Now you can choose one of the three. However, if you choose all three and you integrate them, imagine how powerful the activation will be. And imagine how that will engage you. Now there's so much to this. There's, there's what happens when your mind is activated at that level or stimulated as Napoleon Hill says, it's, it's that your rate of vibration of your thoughts goes up to a different level. The frequency increases. And when the frequency gets to such a level, you will be aware of so many other things, opportunities, solutions to what seem like seemingly impenetrable problems, ways of building your business, ways of monetizing. You'll, you'll increase the frequency of your thoughts and it puts you on a whole different level of frequency where you become aware of a whole different level of ideas, solutions, opportunities, and you, if you act on those, which you'll want to, you'll be drawn to, you'll automatically say yes to, you will be working at a much higher level and you'll get, you'll receive the success that you're looking for in all three of those areas, sexual expression, love, and financial gain, which is amazing, right? That this can happen. So those are the, the three top mind stimulants and they draw you forward. And you can be in love with a person or in love with an idea or in love 
with a purpose or business vision. Okay, so love, that second one, can be a person, an idea, or a business impact vision. Okay, for me, I will say that the year that I went from making 138 to making 700K in one year, you know, the, the company has crossed seven figures and we keep growing since then, but that was the, the big quantum leap for me. My burning desire was to make a million dollars. I had a very clear, concrete financial goal that was so exciting for me. It was so exciting. And it has become clear to me that even though now I have a bigger vision for the impact that I want to make with my business and that the love that I that I'm seeking is not just of a person but um, for this impact in the beginning I would say that I was using that third mind stimulant primarily I was just going after the financial gain part of things and yet now I know that my purpose was tied up in that because I needed to to experience to learn to go through how to do this for myself in order to be able to teach others how to do it as well but I also needed the money it wasn't just um wasn't just altruistic purpose right like oh my goodness I want to be able to teach people how to build an amazing business that was you know that's beautiful and that's that's with 2020 hindsight that's from my position now looking back I can go oh yeah that's why that was so important to me that's why I claimed that big goal but at the time I just wanted to make more money I wanted to feel flush I wanted to have the experience of having money and not feeling strapped not feeling like I had to worry about every expenditure that I was making that I had to worry about how I was spending my money I just wanted enough money to to like live life well and this gets to a position that Wallace Waddles has in the science of getting rich and this is one of the things that I teach it's a, a program that I have so if you're ever interested in that please reach out to us and we'll, we'll set you up with that but I'm going to read a passage from this book because it's very, very important and it changed everything for me. It's in the chapter, The Right to Be Rich. Whatever may be said in praise of poverty, the fact remains that it is not possible to live a really complete or successful life unless one is rich. No man can rise to his greatest possible height in talent or soul development unless he has plenty of money for to unfold the soul and to develop talent he must have many things to use and he cannot have these things unless he has money to buy them with a man develops in mind soul and body by making use of things and society is so organized that man must have money in order to become the possessor of things therefore the basis of all advancement for man must be the science of getting rich the object of all life is development and everything that lives has an inalienable right to all the development it is capable of that is you you have an inalienable right to more life to develop yourself he goes on to say man's right to life means his right to have the free and unrestricted use of all the things which may be necessary to his fullest mental spiritual and physical unfoldment or in other words his right to be rich that changed everything for me it was really powerful when i read that and he's saying here that you need the fine that that the financial means are important you need those financial means to allow you to do your work in this world and and this was part of my purpose the ability to live out my purpose and it's part of your ability to live out your purpose too you need 
a certain amount of finances in order to do your genius work in this world. But in order to do that, I had to be willing to change. Here's the rub. You can, you can get that. You can get that concept. But if you're not willing to change, you will never make that happen for yourself. So I had to, I had to be willing to do whatever it took to become the person who could make that kind of money. I was all in. And it started linking this back to burning desire. It started with the it started with that burning desire. I got hooked on the idea that I could make a million dollars. I fell in love with that idea. It it was a true desire. Where did it come from? I have some theories about that. But it was a true desire and it synced up with something inside of me. Some people say that they're willing to change, but when push comes to shove, they're not willing to risk it. And risk looks like investing in yourself. Risk looks like investing in your business. It's buying the thing. It's hiring the person. It's saying yes when you don't know if you have enough money. It's faith in advance. It's faith knowing in advance of, let me say that differently. It's faith in advance of knowing with certainty that it's going to work out. That's the definition of faith, right? You have to believe in the unseen. But most people say, oh yeah, I'm willing to change. I'm willing to risk things. But then when push comes to shove, they say that's too big of a risk. I don't see the way. I'm not certain yet. I'm not going to invest. I'm not going to spend my money. If you notice how you spend your money, you will notice your level of commitment to change. How willing are you to invest in yourself and your business? How much fear do you have around that? And you have to, you have to just go for it. I know that sounds flip when I say it like that, but I don't mean it in a flip way. I mean that you have to fall in love with the thing that you're going after so much that it is impossible for you not to achieve it. You may pick the wrong time frame during which you'll achieve it, but you will achieve it. If you're so in love with it, you will be driven to achieve it. That doesn't let you off the hook. You must keep stretching yourself every single time. And and looking at how you're spending your money is a brilliant way of getting really honest and transparent with yourself. Another way I did this was I started doing bigger things before I felt ready. I remember I put on a two or three day retreat for women and I'd never done that before. I'd never done a one day retreat. I didn't do anything virtually retreaty wise. I had done nothing. And I said, I'm going to do this. This is part of my vision. And I did it. And I had 18 women in the room and, you know, I had to pay, you know, deposits for hotels and I had to do, um, pay for food and lunches while people were there. I did it. You know, there was a huge amount of financial investment up front, not, not knowing for certain whether, it was going to work. I hired an event planner, someone to manage things, right? While I was there. And I made 100K in two days. That was a big payday with a small number of people in the room. And there's a lot more to how that happened. But part of it was just saying, yes, I'm going to keep moving towards what I want, my big desires. I was determined to be that person. So, so you have to be a quick decider in this, this front, in this way. Uh, that's been a big part of my process, something that I really teach. It's like you have to have the burning desire and then you, you will be given the way. When that idea comes, comes to you, you have to then act on it quickly before all the pros and cons come in and you talk yourself out of it through analysis paralysis. Okay, don't do that. Be a quick decider. And then the other thing that I did that was about really committing to changing because I knew that if I wanted to get different level results, I couldn't do it being who I was right now. I had to grow who I was being in order to get different level results. Otherwise, I would have gotten them already. 
Now, this wasn't saying I was a horrible and bad person and you don't have to cut yourself down at the knees, but you do have to honestly say to yourself, hey, look, the results I'm getting are coming from who I'm being. And clearly, those aren't the results I want. I want, some of them are probably great. You don't have to throw the baby out with the bath bath water. But over here, this is what I really want. I have to change. I can't say, oh, it's like, I can't say it's like this, or this is the circumstance, or it's because... It's because I'm a single mom. It's because of COVID. It's because of the economy. It's because I changed the type of business I was in. It's because I don't have the money. You can't come up with excuses like that. You have to be committed, okay? You have to be committed to growing who you're being. And one of the ways I did that was constantly going back for VIP day after VIP day to uncover my blind spots when I couldn't see for myself, where my core wounds were blocking me from seeing the truth. This was something that I did every few months. I had another VIP day. I was like, let's rip that that open, right? I was going to say rip the bandaid off. Sometimes it feels like that. But you know, I, I wanted to, I was like so committed. I wanted what I wanted so badly. And if I had to, to look at those shadowy places, those dark places, those places that I had shame and guilt, those places where it felt so hard to look at, I was going to do that. I was so committed. Okay. And I needed to be able to see my underlying belief structure, my subconscious um, belief structure that was keeping me blind from seeing how I was stopping myself. Okay. So that was really important. And I was all in on this, on changing my identity, who I saw myself as. And I was willing to move mountains. So you've got to ask yourself, are you Are you willing to move mountains? Are you so in love with your desire that you'll do whatever it takes? I did the work because I wanted the outcome. I fell in love with the outcome. It was my muse, if you will. I was willing to struggle for it. And yes, you want to get to the place where it's not a struggle, but I was willing to go through the places that were a struggle, that were hard, that were emotional blocks, that were mental blocks, sometimes even physical blocks. I know many people have a pattern of stopping around their health. They get tired, they get sick, they get headaches, right? How can you be unstoppable around this? This is what you have to look at. You're not going to quit. I I was not going to quit. I was going to be unstoppable. And when it got hard, my burning desire got me through. Now, I didn't consciously say, okay, today, burning desire, get me through. No, I was so hooked by it. I was so in love with it. There was no other way to be. I had to do it. And I don't think you can build this. I don't think you can like say, I am going to build a burning desire for something. I think you can let go of things that get in your way, of claiming what you really want. But I think what you really want comes through, boom, like a lightning bolt. And it's just like, oh, that's what I want. You you may have to do incremental, and hopefully fast, fast incremental work over time to let go of the blind spots, the double binds, the blocks that keep you from fully claiming what you want but when you get to that place and it drops in that's what you want okay it just every and everyone has this everyone has a burning desire it just needs to be seen and claimed and this is one of the things that I help people with in VIP days because we look at those blind spots we look at the the places where you are holding double binds and we unpack that and we say okay if we release this, if we, if we sacrifice this, if we change your thinking around this and help you to build your identity in alignment with the, the, the new thinking that you're claiming, then the real desires start to just flood in. They cannot be stopped because you've made space for them. You've sacrificed the old things that are no longer serving you, that are keeping you stuck. 
that are limiting, creating fear around claiming your desire. And when those are gone, then it comes flooding in. Okay. So back to my story, I kept going back for VIP days for three years. Every few months, I would do another VIP day to unpack and see what I couldn't see for myself. Now, you'd think I would have gotten really good at this, and I was really good at it, okay? I, I was already doing VIP days for clients and, and helping them break through. But I am so committed to what I want that I knew that I needed to keep doing my own work so that I could get to a higher and higher level. So I did that for for three years, maybe a little bit longer, okay? To unpack every single blind spot that was holding me back from the next level of success. And needless to say, I was very committed to that process. And it finally got to the point where I could look at my relationship with my husband. It's not that I hadn't looked at that up until this point at all it's not like I wasn't that wasn't part of the conversation because quite frankly even when you're doing work on business strategy and business uh in your your life uh, excuse me and even when you're doing VIP days on your business you're not separate from the rest of your life okay if there's something going on in your marriage you have to look at that because it's going to affect your business and quite frankly it the way you are showing up in your marriage is the way you're showing up in your business and vice versa it just is a fact okay and it's so so it's not that i hadn't looked at it i did but i wasn't yet at the time up until that point ready or willing to see how the relationship wasn't the best for either of us if you want to hear more about that story if this is sort of jogging something for you, I would definitely go back to episode number 23 in the podcast, Is Your Relationship Hindering Your Growth? A look at my divorce, okay? And I do a very honest assessment for you guys and take you through what my decision-making process was and what that meant. And and I am not pro-divorce and I didn't take it lightly or any of that, Um I'm pro I'm pro love and I am pro more, more life and that's a great episode to to listen back to. So what happened when I was ready to get really honest and I unpacked and saw what I hadn't seen before, the blind spot and all of that, all my sexual energy that I thought I didn't have, that I thought like didn't exist in me came rushing back. Literally as I was driving away from that VIP day, I almost drove off the road. It was so friggin' intense. It was like my whole body was overwhelmed by this incredible sexual energy. And this was so dramatic for someone who felt like uh, she wasn't sexual at all. And you can listen back to some of the other episodes we've done on this podcast where I'm, I've been very open and transparent about uh, my my past sexual Uh, energy which was what I now know as suppressed and what that was all about okay so when I finally was willing to see this blind spot in my thinking around my marriage all my sexual energy came back it was like night and day it was like a, a, a a flood a river of of sexual energy just flooded me and I saw something different for myself. It was a vision, a muse that called me forward. I saw how my core wound of being unlovable was keeping me small. And and that was related to this stuff in my marriage, the kind of relationship I was in. So, So I just want to pause here and say that you can have a core wound of being unlovable even if you're in a relationship. That was certainly me I was in a relationship but I was you know I was in a marriage that was actually quite good and you could even say great you know for all intents and purposes it was a really awesome relationship in so many ways and yet I had this core wound of being unlovable and that had driven much of the, the that relationship and 
that was certainly what was happening for me. So I have a lot of experience with and, and can speak to that further at some point. If you're interested in that, let me know. But let's circle back. So everyone has a different version of how this got developed, how a core wound got developed. It's unique to your experience, your history, your your childhood, the meanings that you made from the experiences that you had. For me, I took my experiences and created meaning, created a loyalty pact that said that I was going to see myself as unlovable in order to fit in with my tribe, my people, my family of origin. And I was going to see myself as someone who had to jump through hoops in order to be lovable. And that's where the I'm not good enough core wound and the I'm unlovable core wound merge or meet. Okay. They're slightly different, but they, they go like hand in glove together. So these core wounds are in your subconscious. They are, they are part of your self image, how you see yourself. Now, consciously, I know I'm lovable consciously. I believe I'm lovable, but subconsciously my self image was of someone who was unlovable. And I've done a huge amount of work on this and it's fundamentally changed. And yet the subconscious will hold on to this. So I cannot say that it's a hundred percent transformed yet, that it will never hook me again. And I'm going to give you an example of how it can still hook me in just a moment. Okay. But I see it now, which is the difference. I see it now and can make changes faster than I ever could in the past. And that's how you really, really change. But you do have to always be vigilant because your subconscious programming runs deep and that can work for you and it can work against you. So you can reprogram yourself to something very powerful and you can run that program and that can run deep. You've also been brought up with other programs that are embedded in your subconscious that are working just beautifully for you and you want those to keep running. Like for a good example of that for me would be my work ethic. Okay. That is definitely part of my identity, part of my belief structure that works to my advantage. I didn't have to learn as an adult how to have a strong work ethic. I have that wired in me and I, that's going to serve me well, but the unlovable wiring does not serve me well. And your subconscious can be very insidious. It can, it can find ways to go right back to where you were before. And I know that. I recognize that through an experience and a sensation in my body. When I'm coming back down to an old level, I feel it in my body. I can feel it. You know, that shrinking feeling, that, that lowering, that, that deflating feeling. And I know, oh, that's me getting thrown out of heaven. That's me going back to an old self image. Uh uh-uh, not going there. So I, I stay unstoppable because I'm unavailable for going backwards. I'm unavailable for going back to the, 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 the feeling set point and the experience set point that I used to have. And yet the, the subconscious is, is insidious and it will, will, uh, continue to find ways to hook you and bring you down. So you have to stay vigilant there and stay unstoppable. So a recent experience of that was a little bit of overindulging around the holidays. Okay. I had a grand old time, uh, hanging out with my man and I ate a ton of really tasty, healthy food, but also a ton of sour cream and onion chips. These are my kryptonite. I love them so much. Oh my God. And I think I probably ate like three large bags myself over a course of three or four days. Like I just went to town. It was a little cray cray. And 
I gained a few pounds. This is not egregious, you guys, okay? This is not the end of the freaking world. This is a few pounds. This can, this can come and go. This is not anything to like freak out about. But my subconscious latched onto it and just started to uh, go on a downward spiral on it. And, and soon it was, you know, poor me. I feel like a sausage being stuffed into my clothes and, oh, look, I'm a sausage in my cute, sexy leather pants. Oh, I don't look so cute and sexy anymore. You know, cycling on and on like this. And it felt like I lost my sexy mojo. Like it got like over the course of a few weeks, I was like, where is my my sexy mojo? And I had this witness perspective on it. And yet um, I could feel myself kind of going down this 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 rabbit hole. OK, um, but I noticed it and, the, and and I noticed, in fact, that it came after some great quality time with my man with much deepening of intimacy where we were about to go to the next level in our intimacy, where I was going to need to open up even more and be that much more vulnerable. Oh, isn't that interesting that right then, this is when I eat the three bags of chips and the business stuff explodes and we have like all this stuff that happens. I'm being thrown out of of heaven, right? And it's because I've reached an upper limit with my lovability and my subconscious is like eh, eh, eh. that's not who you are come back down to size young lady right like the little wagon of the finger at me and so not only did i gain the weight but i had this like uh work stuff exploded and you know handled it with total aplomb had lots of resiliency around it but it took a lot of mental physical and emotional uh, focus to move the company through some hiccups that we had and it was happening for both of us not just me but for my man now isn't that convenient there's always a perfectly reasonable reason why you must go back to your past level. And I could feel my sexual energy just being cut off. Isn't that interesting? But I refuse. Okay. I'm not available for that. I'm like, it's, it's not acceptable for me. Zero tolerance. Once I saw and recognized what was going on and it was a little bit like boiling the frog kind of thing like it built over a couple of weeks and I didn't notice it right away I didn't recognize it for what it was right away usually I recognize it in like 15 minutes but this was a deeper one and it was you know real core wound stuff coming up but I refused to go down that rabbit hole again so I did forgive myself for going down that rabbit hole for the period that I did and then like and and by the way the moment i did that forgiveness practice instantly all my sexual energy came back okay it, it's like it's such a direct link it's such a cue it's such a key indicator okay so i stay unstoppable by being vigilant around this and being determined and persistent around this because i know what i want and i have that burning desire so now i know so I'm going to link this back to burning desire again. So we've talked about burning desire, talked about core wound. My burning desire initially was the business getting to a million dollars. And, and then what did my burning desire become? Well, it became having that extraordinary love relationship, experiencing unconditional love, being someone who loved openly, open-heartedly, being someone who experienced and received love, being lovable, healing that core wound. And it crystallized, it, that, that desire crystallized in an image of a particular kind of relationship that I desired. And that then became my next burning desire. OK, that then was it's not that I left the business desire to the to the side. 
it was that I added a second desire, this, this burning desire, and they're actually quite linked. But going backwards, you know, stepping back from that, I had no idea that there was going to be more beyond this first burning desire that I had, the, the financial um, income desire, the million dollars. I needed it to get to the place where I could claim an even bigger desire. So I, when I started this journey, what I'm saying here is that when I started this journey, I could not have articulated that my bigger desire was, was love. However, I needed that first level desire, which was going after the seven figure business so that I could grow in certain ways and become the person who could even fathom something more for herself. And when I say grow in certain ways, I mean, I had to learn personal responsibility. I had to not be a victim. I had to not blame. I had to be comfortable being alone. I had to know that I would survive, that I wasn't dependent on others, that I, that because if if you don't think that, then you're always going to think of love as a tool for manipulation to stay secure in your life, in a relationship. If you're not comfortable being alone, you will use love to manipulate. And that that's not true love, but it's it's what passes in the society as love. I had to learn confidence. I had to learn not fearing rejection. That was huge. I did that all in my business. So sales, you know, people often talk about um, business as the business, the biggest personal growth journey that they've ever been on. Absolutely agree. And yet I think we could crystallize that down, be a little bit more granular around that. I think sales, learning how to do sales is the biggest personal growth journey that you could ever go on because it's in that sales conversation that you have to learn how to own yourself, how to own your value, how not to make yourself small, how to show up in a way that's not taking, but is giving, even when you get paid. How do you show up with honesty, without manipulation, without passive aggressiveness, without not saying the whole truth, with being very clear and clean? in your communication and sales is the fastest way to learn that because if you own a business for yourself you know that you need to be making sales you might be running from the room not wanting to learn sales not wanting to do sales but i'm telling you sales is what moves money so you have to learn sales and when you because if you want your if you want to reach your financial goal you have to learn sales period full stop even if you have people working for you doing sales, even if you do it online, you need to learn sales. It's so critical. Anyways, I, I, I feel so passionate about that because women especially need to learn how to get comfortable with money and asking for money. And there's so much around, um, they feel guilty around the, they feel like they're manipulating people. They feel like they're taking from others and it couldn't be further from the truth. So if you really want to break through on that, we're, we are doing a, a sales intensive on February 22nd and 23rd of 2021. Uh, if you, I, I think we only have two scheduled for this year. So this is one and the next one is at the end of the year. So if this is something you're interested in, it's a two day intensive um, with me either virtually or if you're traveling these days, we would be social distancing, but you can do it in person. Um, so reach out to us. You can you can book a, a consult with us to find out if that's the right fit for you. Um, where do you do that? You do that at theunstoppablewoman.com slash next level. And that will allow you to talk to someone on my team to, to help figure out if that is the right thing for you. Okay, so I had to become a bigger version of myself in order to fathom that there was something more for myself. And the more was having a profound love, such a deep and intimate lit up relationship and being in that sort of place of like, just knowing that I was fully loved by myself, by spirit, 
by my man, all three. Okay. That, that, that this love was, was so big. It just, uh, it, it just in, infused every cell of my body. This then became my new muse, right? How do I become that woman? Okay. It was my new burning desire for which I would move mountains, move mountains, do any, which means do anything ethical, right? I'm not saying I'm going to murder someone, but like do everything in my power to get to that place. Okay. Not say later, not say next year, not say when I have more time, none of that. I would move mountains now to achieve that. And this new burning desire, this was not an either or thing with my business. Okay. It, it was, I, I didn't make it. I can either have the love or I can have the business success. This is super important. You guys, I didn't make it either, or I made the two linked dependent on each other connected in my mind so that I didn't have to choose because that's one of the things that comes up. I can either have love or I can have money, which is bullshit. Okay. It's not true, but I wanted to make sure that if I was going for this, that it actually fueled the other. So the business success fueled the love and the love fueled the business success that I was not going to separate the two. And I can speak more on that another time, but suffice it to say for now, I see being someone who has moved through and beyond her core wound of unlovable as a key aspect of my business. For so many women, they get trapped playing small in what they're doing in their business because they feel unlovable. Not consciously, you guys. Consciously, you are feminist badasses, okay? Seriously, it's, it's huge. And because there's this core wound, not consciously, but subconsciously, how does that show up? It means you can't rock the boat, bringing up truth in your relationship, being vulnerable there, saying the tough things, taking risks in your business, because what would your husband say? What would your wife say? Okay. What would your girlfriend say? What would your boyfriend say? The fear of the love being pulled away causes you not to spend money on yourself, not to travel, not to do the things that you want to do, not to invest in life in the way that you want to. Okay. And what if, and then there's the fear of like, what if you succeed? There's these, these fears that, that you're going to be alone. Like I'm going to become so big. I'm going to outgrow my partner. And that keeps you feeling small. And again, this is the fear of rejection. And it, if you're feeling this in your relationship, you're feeling this in your sales without a doubt. So look at that. Okay. Look at that. So these are just a handful of the ways that, that, that feeling of that core wound of being unlovable plays into limiting you in your business. All of these, like if you're afraid that you're not lovable in and of yourself as you, and that you're dependent on someone else for their love to make you lovable, you are trapped. You are absolutely trapped. You need to love yourself. I know that sounds trite. I know that's also quite obvious, but you need to be someone who knows herself to be lovable so that if the relationship that you're in right now doesn't work because you become uber successful or you take a risk in your business and spend money and it's a flop or, or maybe it's a success either way, but it's not what your partner thinks is an appropriate use of money that you don't diminish your lovability. If you think that you can't do this thing because someone is going to judge you and reject you, you don't truly feel lovable. You're going to then make yourself small, not do the thing, and it's going to limit your 
business and it's going to limit your income and you've got to clean that up. So those two things are, uh, are linked. Okay. They are linked. If any of this is landing for you, my advice for you is to book a strategy to scale consultation with us. And, and let's just discuss a path that helps you release that core wound and rapidly build your business concurrently, not separately. These two things, they go together. I hope I've done a good enough job explaining how these two things go together. If you have a core wound of being unlovable, you are going to shrink from doing the things that you need to do in your business for fear that the current person in your life who is your significant other is going to reject you. And then you won't take that risk, even though you know that's the thing that you need to do in your business. And we need to break through on that because you have everything you need to go forward and, and to make the income that you want to make in your business, but you cannot let these core wounds hold you back. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to reject the person in your life or divorce the person in your life. Absolutely not. I've worked with so many people for whom that when we do this work, their relationships just get so much better. And that's a beautiful thing. So you can find the link in the show notes if you want to have a consultation or you can go directly to uh, that, that link that I gave earlier, the unstoppablewoman.com slash next level to book some time with us. And with that, we're going to call it a wrap. Claim your burning desires, love hard, go all out and have a fabulous Valentine's Day where you love yourself and you love the people in your life and you love your business. Okay, rock it out, be unstoppable, and I'll see you in the next episode. Hey there, my friend. Do you resonate with what you just heard? Then head over to our free resource page and get more of our good stuff, including our free Unstoppable Woman playbook and money breakthrough system. You'll find that and more at theunstoppablewoman.com slash free stuff. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.